This is a quick video over graphically determining the number of operating stages for an absorber. And the same concept applies to a stripper. But let's just start with an absorber. So I'll draw up an absorber. Absorber. Oops, make that just a little bit bigger. And we'll have our fluid coming in, and that will be X naught our vapor coming out, and that will be Y1. And of course, our vapor coming in with containment, this is YN plus 1, and this is XN. And with this information or this graph, we have the operating line. This is the operating line. It is always a line. And we also have the equilibrium curve. Oops, curve. And it is set, we cannot change it. We can, however, change our operating line. And for instance, if we assume that we have X naught that is clean, so there is so this is like high impurities in the liquid, and this has no this is like pure clean liquid right here, down here. So if we assume that we always had clean liquid and we wanted this to be y1, then we could change how much the flow rates are. And we could, sorry, that's a bad drawing, but we could change the flow rates. We could have it up something high like this, or something like, something like this. But it's really important to note is that this operating line should never cross the equilibrium line. And that will become hopefully clear in the next few minutes when I actually start showing you how the stages are made. So we know what y1 is, and we and we know what x0 is. We assumed x0 was clean, so it will be right here. Now y1 is an equilibrium, is an equilibrium with x x1. So this is x1. So if we had stage one, y1 must be in equilibrium with x1. x1. So that is one stage. But X1 is mixing with Y2. It's mixing with Y2, so we go straight up. And this represents X1 and Y2, or their mixing point, you can kind of think of it. So this is Y2. So that's their mixing point, but what's what is Y2 in equilibrium with? So we have to go straight across to the equilibrium line from our operating line. And it is in equilibrium with X3. So then we have another stage. This is stage 2. And it's in equilibrium with X3. And X3 is mixing with Y. Whoops, that's y2, not 3. 2. Whoops. Uh. Whoops. Because x2 is leaving stage, stage 2, so these two must be in equilibrium with each other. And this is, of course, y3, because it's coming from stage 3. So we go up. And this is y3. So we go all the way across. So what must Y3 be in equilibrium with? Well, Y3 must be in equilibrium with the liquid, which is that, which this would be X3. So then X3, oops, I'm not doing that right. X3 must be is leaving, so it must be in equilibrium with Y3. And that is mixing with, if we said that our our containment, like this was our, I should have done this at the beginning, but we knew our containment, or our vapor had a containment of this amount, or so this would be N plus 1. This was our containment. So our containment was mixing with the outlet. So then, if this is X3, then our containment, or our vapor in the containment, must be 
by 4. So we only need 3 stages. So this is actually y4 because x3 is mixing with y4. So this is y4. So really, this is x3 and again just y4. And again, x3 is mixing with y4, so mixing point, mixing point, mixing point. So it's really important that you have to start up here at y at y4, or really you could just start right here. Maybe your graph line you got something like this. And if you know it's a straight line down, then you know that this is the equilibrium point. And really the important thing is knowing that that this represents the state straight across represents the number of stages. It's also important to know that that the uh, the number of stages this point has to hit perfectly or this this line that we go up and down and across each time like this must hit perfectly like that. So that's pretty much all there is to an absorption tower when you're trying to figure it out graphically. Oh, there's actually a little bit more, and I'll go into it about this operating line, how you can change this operating line.